Here we go, back again. Today's video is to do with VE Day and a little bit of history into my family, where they came from, what happened with them during the war and since then what's happened. And basically, back in 1945, at the beginning of 1945, the German army had weakened considerably. And then on Tuesday the 8th of May at 3 p.m. Winston Churchill on the 8th of May came out and declared that Germany had surrendered the day before. So Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister, came on the radio and said Germany had surrendered. VE Day, victory in Europe. I am now currently going through Schotten to where my mum was born and my grandparents lived in a house up here on the right hand side. My uncle actually still lives there. And I've got loads of memories as a kid. Loads of memories as a kid. As I turn right here, you'll see the house right in front of you. There you go. And I will spin round and cause mayhem in the streets as I tend to do. We're in Shotton Colliery. That's where we are. I remember my granda, one of my earliest memories of my granda used to talk about the war. He says when he worked at the pit, he was working at the pit, he used to be in charge of the lifts or the cages that used to go up and down the mines. And <clears throat> he said when the blackout was happening, you couldn't put lights on, you couldn't put any lights on in the street, any lights on in the house. And it was different shift, there was back shift, there was first shift, there was all sorts of shifts at the pit. You know, at the time mining was was it was really important to the community. The unity throughout Durham with the mines, and it, it was important. It was really important for everyone's livelihood. The mines was was a pinnacle of, of, of a lot of villages, really important part of the villages. And my granddad used to work down the pit. Now he said during the night at three o'clock in the morning, there used to be a guy used to come along with a big stick and a little lamp, a little lamp or a little lantern. I used to tap on the bedroom window to make sure you were awake to go for your shift. It was everybody needed the coal back in them days. And my granddad said, you know, he used to come out tapping on the bedroom window, making sure you were awake. My mum was born in that house, and my uncles. Now that soldier I've just shown you the statue of, that was erected to remember the 158 people who lost their lives in the First World War, but also for the 38 people in Shot and Colby who lost their lives in the Second World War. So people go there and they can pay the respects. Now up here on the left hand side is where the old Shot and Pit used to be. Like I said, I'm currently driving out of Shot and now, but my nana, she was absolutely, she was, she was one of the you know, in, in my mind and in my lifetime, one of the greatest people I will ever know. She was really intelligent, she was really nice, she wouldn't have a bad word to say about anybody. Such a lady, such a wonderful woman. If somebody had something nasty to say about somebody, she would correct them. And she was a fantastic cook. Now I'll go back to my memories with my grandma. The chips she used to make were always big, fat, juicy chips and they're absolutely beautiful and tasty. I could never replicate what she made. They were, they were absolutely fantastic. And my granddad, my granddad, he, he, was, he was a character, all right. He was a, you know, he loved the Labour Party, as, as you expect most miners to do. But and he, and he could not stand the Tory party. He wanted Labour to win every single election and he used to love the PM question time and he, he would, he would uh, get a bit animated at times but he was a fantastic bloke, my granddad and he, he was, you know, he was a proud man, a proud man he loved his family, a family man and my nana, they were a great couple lived a, a good, a good, good happy life together it was absolutely amazing and I miss them both daily and so I'm currently heading down Low Hills Road at Peter Lee now my granddad was born in 1923, the 17th of November, and my grandma was born in 1927, the 14th of November, and they met, and obviously had my mum, who was born in 1948, three years after the war finished. 
So you can imagine if Germany had won the war, would have we even been around? Would some of us have even been around? Would any of us have even been around? Would Germany have annihilated the whole of the population? We never know. We're just lucky that Adolf Hitler and his Gestapo and his SS weren't good enough to win the war. Why, to be honest, Adolf Hitler made a, a schoolboy a retire. He tried to take over the world. He tried to take over the world and he didn't have a big enough army to do it. If he just solely concentrated on trying to beat the likes of England, go through to France, into England and try to conquer England rather than going into Siberia, into Russia, into Africa and try to go everywhere. Had his army too thin and they basically starved and, you know, and they died of starvation in the cold in Siberia and Russia. He tried to take off too much in one go but luckily for us he did which led to his downfall. He didn't have the power to take the whole world on. He should have just concentrated on one area then it might have been a whole different story but I'm really pleased he didn't do that because none of us would be around the day. So on, on VE day, you know, victory in Europe, England and his and the allies, there was a massive party outside Buckingham Palace, King George, you had Queen Elizabeth and you had, you had Princess, sorry, Princess, Princess Margaret and Princess Elizabeth to be queen eventually. They asked the king's permission that they could go out into the streets and party with the public and he gave it and they sneaked off into the outside Buckingham Palace and they danced the night away with the public. Apparently they did the conga, going back to Buckingham Palace, that was our queen now dancing and partying and said it was one of the best nights of her life. Heading to Easton village where my mum actually currently lives. We're going to be heading down towards the colliery towards where my dad actually lives. Now my mum, like I said, she's in her 70s now. She is socially isolating, keeping herself safe. She has said there's some street parties going on in people's gardens as you do to celebrate VE Day. And my dad, again, was born in 47. He was a pitman. Same as my stepdad's a pitman, because my parents were divorced in 81. Both remarried again and both living happily lives. But this brings back loads of memories. Is and I do still come here and visit my parents every now and again, but I haven't been down to the very bottom to where the, the mine was. Is it in the pit? Is it in the pit? Now my nana and granda from my dad's side. My granddad was born in 21, my nana 23. My nana used to work in the pit canteen, which I presume that's where she met my granda. Because he was a miner, obviously, and he got drafted into the RAF. He used to fill the guns, the bullets, and obviously the other, other kind of weaponry. He used to fill those as well. And then at some point he was drafted back into the mines because there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough workers in the mines to keep the mines operating and the mines were really important back in them days. So my granddad did yes served in the RA, served in the Air Force at some point. Now again they both lived through the war and obviously my dad was born in 47, two years after the war ended. So I'm now in Easton Colliery and there's my old junior school. It's all bordered now it's a listed building been closed for a lot of years now. It was a great old school, I had some great memories here as a junior and I really remembered all the school dinners, the lovely school dinners, remember the mushy peas, <laughs> gravy and sticky toffee pudding was my favourite, gravy, custard and sticky toffee pudding, not gravy. So that was the old junior school and then that was the infant school. It used to be boys and girls school, one was a boys school, one was a girls school, then they changed it to infants and juniors, it even says infants on the side there, that's boarded up as well, listed building, they've, they've tried to knock it down over the years but not allowed. Yeah, great memories down here, Ease and Colby being brought up, it's more like a, uh, like a prison wasn't it with all those bars around the outside, <laughs> hasn't been used for years, dropping the bits.
now we're heading down Easerton Colliery, I'm going to take you down to my earliest memories of my nana and my granda. I lived down Cross Street, down Easerton Colliery, all the shops down the left hand side now, a majority of them are boarded up now, since the pit closed, a lot of the shops, businesses went bust, people left the area, not much work. You have three sets of streets, the A, B's and C's. My nana and granddad first originally lived down the C streets, which was Cross Street. And I don't even know if the house, the street is still there or has it been knocked down. I don't know. I'm going to find out now. So we're driving down now. He's in Colby towards the Cross Street. So I'm going to take you along Station Road. It's called Station Road because the, the pit station was just down the corner. I'll take you to the old pit heap. I'll take you to the old mine shaft. We'll go there next after visiting the street. Now, my me, me grand, nana and granda moved from Cross Street up into the B Streets, which was Butler Street, but that one I know has definitely been knocked down since. When the pit closes, they knocked some of the streets down because people left the area, it became empty. People like, you know, just moved in and slept in them and eventually they got smashed up and fell to bits. And here we are going down now. Down the cross street, I don't know if it still exists. We'll drive down now. I haven't been down here for absolutely years. Yes, there it is, cross street, it's still there. Now, that big mound there of grass. Here we are, cross street, that was my nana's house. I'll turn around here, as you can see, straight up there, behind the lamppost, that was my nana and granddad's house. And they used to tell me stories of the war. As you can see up there, it says Cross Street. Now this mound here on the right hand side, mound of grass as you're going to see there, used to be a, a, a big brick wall. It used to go all the way along the side of the pit. All that was a pit property inside there. And there was, there was loads of gunshots on the wall where the, the Germans had came over you know, tried to bomb everywhere and, 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 and shoot everywhere. And there was bullet holes all down the wall of the World War. And I see, I see some streets have been knocked down now along the sea streets. And my granddad, again, was an absolute, my granddad, both granddads were funny, funny men. And, and my granddad used to, you know, he, used to, he was a good little draw, he was a good artist, just draw little cartoon characters, he was really, really funny. Uh, he used to make some absolutely beautiful, really thin chips. When my nana, from my mum's side, made the thick chips, my granda made some absolutely beautiful thin chips. Egg and chip, egg chips and beans. <laughs> I used to love going for that. It's strange. Now we're heading towards where the pit was. Wasn't too far away. All these, all these streets around here was, was pit houses. All of them. I'm down here, down now, Easton Colliery. Remember parking the car up there many a time, picking me dad and me stepdad up from work. From the pit, pit baths used to be up there. And there, as you can see in the distance, is the pit mine shaft. We're we'll gonna have a wander up there soon. Remember going for walks along here. With my granddad, she took us on long walks along the beach banks. And my nana, my nana was a fabulous woman. She, my nana Jean, she used to smoke wood woodbines. She used to work in the club. She used to tell a few good jokes. She was, a, she was, she was a great character. My nana, she was a lovely woman. God bless the souls. And my granddad. I remember waking up with my granddad's one, one, one afternoon, and it was the Cheltenham Gold Cup. It was on, and it was, it was Dawn Runner just won for John Joe Neal. I remember I was only young at the time and I remember seeing my granddad like these horses. Both granddads like, like the horses, like the horse racing. I remember John Joe and Neil had won it and the cartoon came on called Ulysses. It was Ulysses, Ulysses, flying through all the galaxies in search of life. Still remember the song to this day. We're heading out towards Aeson Pit. Now, here we are coming to the old pit cage. Now, every now and again, I keep calling it the Blumen Mine Shaft. The mine shaft back there, this is the pit cage. This is the lower men down four or five hundred feet into the ground so they could start the work digging the coal. 
1993 the pit closed and that's like a memento of to never forget is it McCollby pit there was a disaster here back in 51 where I think 80 odd people lost their lives but like my granddad served in the Air Force but also works down here yeah this is the old pit cage just the lone men and there's the cages itself there must be the cages itself have a look looks like it could be what lowers the men down they're only small I mean, wonderful views you can see for miles around there we go that would lower the men down four five hundred feet as you can see it's, it's barely six foot <clears throat> And then you have your people who want to just ruin it by putting the names, engraving the names as kids do, but blue paint, blue paint, I don't understand why blue paint, that would lower you down into the ground. Jesus, what a place to work, eh? But, like I said, people engraving things in the old pit cage. And I do apologise if I call it the mine shaft because I am losing my mind and my memory a little bit so I just say things sometimes the words open my mouth and the words come out not always in the correct order or in the correct place Here comes the train. Yeah. Never crossing a red light. That never used to be there years ago. Yeah, be careful down here. National Trust. One of the most beautiful beaches you'll ever see in your lifetime. Just natural. It's like a different planet, different world down here. Yeah, I'm not going any further because it's a bit dangerous and a bit steep now. But, spent many a year down here training and getting around that corner and the tide's out. Tide's in at the moment. Caught a few fish down there as well. Spent many a year training down here, many a year training down here. In my 20s, went from just a normal jogger Hope to get two England vests and I put training down here is one of the reasons why I actually did so well. Fresh air, off-road, beautiful countryside. I used to train for the marathon and do three hour runs down here. I used to run maybe from Seam. You can go from here to see him all the way back, all the way to Black Hall without touching a road at all. Three hours off road, 28 mile, training for the marathon. Absolutely fantastic. You know, you never get your time back. So if you're out there and you think about doing something in your life, do it. Because you'll only have regrets if you don't. And I give it everything. Back in the 90s and the 2000s, I give it everything into running. And I got to the level I could possibly get to, you know, without sort of the technology you have it these days. And I'm actually proud of what I've achieved. 
I've one or two disappointments, but don't we all? Look at that man, how oh, yeah. weird. Let's, let's zoom in at that rock in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely amazing. I think they made, they did down Dorden Beach, they do it, they made aliens. And down Black Hall Beach, they made Get Carter. I mean, over the years, the, the cliffs have been eroded away. You think about 20, 30 years ago, there wouldn't be anywhere near that, be further out here somewhere. But, so what happens in time? See a road away, see a roads away the cliffs. And it's been reopened now. What's happened down here? All the way along the Horden Black Hall, we go all the way along the Seaton Carew, Hardy Pool, Headland, Hardy Pool, Seaton Carew. You can go for miles, especially when the tide's out. And we do night fishing down here when I was a kid as well. I take it away, the aerial flight used to be, now the rock. That one there with the birds and the what? That one there is where the aerial flight used to come out to. And I, I, I've got a, I've got a video of Get Carter what they used to be like aerial flights. Now that rock there, I'm convinced. In front of that rock, I can see a concrete. When the tide's out, you can see it better. It's a concrete bollard. That's where the aerial shaft stand used to be. But basically, the cage to drop the coal into the sea. I can see it now, we used to swim from one aerial cage to the next, to the concrete bollard to the next and it would probably go that far out. Now it's it's ridiculous thing about it now, we used to go down there and swim out there, a couple of, this was further out, remember that rock there used to be the cliff banks, that there, we used to be able to walk out there at one point and then further out would be another concrete bollard, another concrete bollard and the core would probably drop about there. We used to swim from, probably from there the concrete bollard to the next one to the next one I mean it was slimy and horrible but when you're kids you do daft things and you get back in again and you, you soak and wet all day long but as your kids that's what you do and then as the the old aerial flight would come down it would just tip the coal like this bit of video I'm going to show you now from Get Carter exactly the same apart from easy and one was a bit bigger and it went further out to sea So yeah, there's the side of the beach. There we go. People down the beach, you can get on the beach that way. Look at that. That's what you call a view, man. Absolutely amazing. And then, if there's a pit, pit shaft up there, look. We'll zoom that in, as you can see it. It is there. Which for me, I say I wasn't, I never worked at the pit, but, That's where it would have gone into all the coal. But in life, there's so many people you love and respect and 
I love my parents and I, I love my grandparents and I respect them all. They're absolutely fantastic people and they own me. I still can't believe my, my nana's name, Martha Lavinia Divine. What an absolutely fantastic name. Brilliant name. My granddad Harry. And you got Tony Thomas and Jean. But down here, I, I, anybody who wants to go for a walk, a couple of hours, get yourself down here the beach, park your car in the car park, park your car on the side of the street, let's have a walk around. It's absolutely amazing. Spend hours and hours down here. Nice day. Someone's got a fire going down there now. It's caves and all sorts down there. I mean, eventually this will all fall into the sea. It's just dropping a bit. And all that cliff's falling in. Eventually it'll all disappear. So come down here for picnics as well. And I was a kid with the whole family. I mean, the, the beach wasn't as nice as it is there. Now we used to go crabbing, getting crabs down there. There's your pipe work. This makes us think this is definitely where the coal went into. The aerial, the aerial flights. I mean, you're talking there now, look at that. That's, that the cliff's falling away there now with erosion. And the path's only there, so it's a matter of time before this path goes the journey, and then we have to move the path further back into probably the farmer's field. But you know, it's locked down at the moment, people are bored. You're going to be able to, I think on, on Sunday, they're going to release a bit of lockdown and, and let you go out for two or three bits of exercise a day, or as much exercise as you want. Use the opportunity, get yourself fit. You can only live once, you know, you're only young once. Keep yourself fit, get yourself fit. Absolutely beautiful countryside. If you live down here, use the beaches. Absolutely, you got, you got you got miles and miles and miles of untapped land you can get yourself fit on. Absolutely fabulous. So victory in Europe, VE Day. That's what it is today. And 1945, 8th of May. But it wasn't until August, until until the, the atomic bombs were dropped on Japan. Was it Nagasaki? Nagasaki? Namasaki? Something like that. They were, they were dropped in Japan. Oh, look at that. It's gone. The cliff's gone. Here, it's gone. It's gone. The path is gone. Jesus. Like I said, that's why I had the barrier before. It's all fell in. It's all fell in. So the Japanese didn't really sort of surrender until September of that year. So over six years the war was on. That's where used to be the, the road that used to drive from the pit. The pit wagons used to go down to the beach. That used to be an old road. I mean, it's gone now. The pit wagons used to drive down to the beach. I don't know what they were doing down there. And that's what they did. And that's the reason why. That's the reason why there's a detour. There we have it, Easerton Local Nature Reserve. Bit of history there for you. Easerton Covey was sunk in 1899 and employed a thousand over thousands of men over a lifetime. Tragedy struck the 29th of May 1951. 83 people lost their lives. In 1993, Eastern Covey was the last East Devon pit to close following the demolition of the mine. Timeline. From the car park up the hill to the pit cage is a distance of 328 metres. The south shaft, the main riding shaft at Aizen Colby was 483 metres deep, 174 metres longer than the path. Yet men would have reached the bottom of the shaft in just over a minute. Loads of skylarks, butterflies and moths, wildflowers and grasslands and pond life all live here now. 
where the old pit used to be. And you've got this beautiful nature reserve and you have people coming down and doing that. Barbecues. Burning the bench. Leaving the shite everywhere. It's absolutely ridiculous. Some people just got no respect for places. They have a beautiful place like this. And some people, you know, they weren't even around probably when the pit was open. They have no idea of the history of the place and they've got no respect for people who've, you know, lost their lives. In World War II, lost their lives. In the Egypt pit disaster, gave their lives for us people to live our lives today. Because if Germany had won, I really don't think I'd be around today. My parents met just after the war. Sorry, that's a bit stupid to say. My parents were born just after the war. Now, if the Germans had won, my grandparents probably wouldn't have gotten together. And my parents wouldn't have been born, so I wouldn't have been alive today. So we have loads to thank. We have loads to thank. Everybody at some point loses their life. Everybody at some point has to die. But these veterans and people who served in the war, and as we have now key workers in this lockdown under this new war against the virus, the key workers of the Second World War, them people give up their lives. Some of them give up their lives. Some of them dedicated their lives so that we can live our lives today. And we have to respect every single one of them. And I certainly do. 1931, aerial flight starts a tip, colliery waste into the sea. 1940, wartime bombing, Bevan boys. Nineteen ninety three closure. Nineteen ninety four pit shaft headgear demolished. Yep, this is easy in nature reserve. And I bet the majority of people respect it. Just been talking to a guy from social distancing. He was a good, I'd say, five, six metres away. I was asking how his day was, and he was just telling us how it's not often you bump into people down here now who are actually people who were born and bred in Eason. He still believes the deer if. He did say to me, he said he believes today, if the pit was still open, you wouldn't have obviously the unemployment and your drug problem that you have now, as it's rife. You know, in a lot of places you go to, and you lost a lot of the community, the unity, the pits throughout the northeast. There was a community. I remember every single house, every single shop being open down East and Colby. And I'm sure, as people do, they will break things, just demolish things and the fence and has been broken and people have gone in and end of the day. Again, it's that thing about respect. There we go. Ponderous Pit Pond, named by Anna Purvis, adopted by Ezet and Colby Primary School and then you got people smashing fences in who have no respect and no care for the world. Yeah, it's just, it, it leaves a bit of taste in your mouth. Well, we've seen the pit cage. Now we're heading off to the mine shaft. There it is, there behind the fence. The mine shaft. Old mine shaft. 
Danger old mine shaft. And there in the distance, you will see some disrespectful youths. They're not socially gathering, are they? Yeah, they're not from the same family. Youngins messing about as youngins do. I mean, if they are from the same household and there's four brothers all the same age, you know, I do apologize, but I'm sure they're from different households and they're getting about, messing about as kids do. These are the Year Streets, the Year Streets, where Billy Elliot was made. Billy Elliot, down here. A lot of these streets have been knocked down. I'll drive down one of them. As you go down, there we go. Look down to the left, that used to be a street in the middle there as well. That's been knocked down where the grass is. A lot of streets knocked down over the years here. There's a guy jogging up the street, looks a bit drunk, high on life. But yeah, Angus Street, Angus Street. I know these streets at the back of my hand, I used to live around here when I was young. This was once a vibrant, absolute vibrant place to live. Every shop was open, every single Every shop was open. Simples. But you're all wondering how? How do I know? I used to live there. It's the solicitors upstairs. That used to be as a Manners and Harrison Building Society. That used to be a nice door. Now look at the state of it. Nobody lives in there now. That actually up there. Yeah, that's it. That was my old bedroom. Hey, <laughs> how times have changed. Yeah. Back in 1981, 1981, I used to live there for two or three years and my parents first got divorced. And that's when I, that's when I, I become a little bit naughty, shall I say. But never mind, that's another story. Now we're heading off. Back up to the ways and there's a co-op on the right hand side, Lad Brooks on the left hand side and there's back again to the old primary school. So like I said before, it's VE Day, VE Day, victory in Europe and like I said, we're all going to die at some point in life. But then people back in 1945, the soldiers, the veterans, the, 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 you know, the, key, the key workers, people who run the country people who fought for the country, give their lives for the country. If it wasn't for them people, we wouldn't be alive today. I'm convinced it would be a different world. You can see the unity of the community lost its soul when the pit closed, pit closed. And I'm now moving into Easington Village. Easington Village, Easington Village, where my mum still lives. My dad lives in the colony, we just passed where my dad lives and now I moved to Easton Village where my mum still lives in Easton Village. On the right hand side used to be the, the village club. That got ripped down a few years ago. My mum had a 50th birthday in there. It's my 50th in June. Unbelievable. That was the old colliery offices. They were ripped down. Now houses. The village inn. Just on the right hand side up ahead was a lovely pub. But now it's a shop. And the houses on the left hand side here was the King's Head. That was the drug den. That's been pulled down, thank God for that. But on the right hand side was the village inn. It was a nice pub and it's now cost cutter. Cost cutter. And straight ahead, the big white building used to be the Mason's Arms where you used to go for a bit of karaoke on a Friday night. And there you have the village church where my kids were christened. I'd spend all day driving around different streets telling you different stories about the place but I haven't got the time and I'm sure you'd be bored already. There you go, thanks for watching the video, please subscribe to the channel, a little something different today for VE Day to remember everybody who served and lost their lives.
to win that war against the Nazi Germans. And it's funny how a full circle has come round now because a new war has broke out, a war against coronavirus, the coronavirus. And England, because of the governments over the years, have let the country go to pot. And you now have the likes of Germany are one of the first countries to basically come out of lockdown, open the barbers, the football start in the week on Saturday. They're ahead of us, Germans, they're ahead of us now. When we were the, the country that saved the world back in 1945 with the Allies against the Japanese and Italians and the Germans now are the first country who are doing the best against the coronavirus and England at this moment in time are lagging behind how the worm turns unbelievable years of the Tory party ripped the heart and soul out of England that is another story the Thatcher years destroying the heart and soul of the country small villages like Easton and Colliery Easton Village and many more to boot Black Hall Horden ripping the heart and soul out of the working class destroying England and now we're suffering we are suffering now we're in lockdown I've been out for me one bit of exercise and me shopping and I'm going on and on and on now I'm going home for me tea to me lovely family and me tea and I'm going to have possibly a little alcoholic beverage tonight and we'll see you later thanks for watching